I'm going to be talking about a new trading strategy that I've been working on, and it's called the 14-day asymmetrical iron condor. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about and covering in this particular presentation today is um, the 14-day uh, the asymmetrical iron condor, what it is. Uh, by the way, AIC is just an acronym for asymmetrical iron condor, so I've uh, put that throughout the uh, presentation. So if you see anything that says AIC, it's just the, uh, uh, the acronym for that, uh, asymmetrical iron condor, a little bit shorter to uh, uh, talk about it that way. Um, then I'm also going to cover, in general, what an asymmetrical iron condor is, what that structure is, because that is what this particular trade is based on. Um, the, based on that structure, and then it kind of goes off onto its own direction from there. Um, then I'm going to take you through the benefits of the 14-day AIC, asymmetrical iron condor, and uh, then I'm going to go through some example trades as well. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first, um, what is the asymmetrical iron condor, or the 14, excuse me, what is the 14-day asymmetrical iron condor? Um, so it's basically a short duration trade uh, designed to make uh, quick profits. So I don't know about you, but I prefer to make my profits as soon as possible rather than having to wait. Um, you know, I don't like to leave risk on the table um, any longer than I have to. Um, so the short time period of the 14 day asymmetrical iron condor has um, some unique benefits, which really allow you to take profits very quickly. Um, <clears throat> Some other unique uh, benefits of the 14-day AIC is that it allows for more trade opportunities, um, which in turn gives you the ability to increase your return potential. And it also has a way of making you, uh, allowing you to put less capital at risk um, than the monthly version. Um, it's also a, uh, with the 14-day AIC, there's uh, no need to guess direction, so it's a complete market neutral strategy. Um, so you don't have to set the trade up to deal with what you think might happen. Uh, we all want to be right at guessing the market direction, but as you know, none of us has a crystal ball. And even for those who are really good at um, accurately guessing the market direction, I wish I was, um, the timing, you know, can make all the difference. So the 14 day asymmetrical iron condor is a completely neutral strategy um, and it's resilient in a variety of market conditions, whether they're up, down or sideways. Um, the 14 day is designed to generate consistent returns. The structure of the 14 day AIC and its risk management plan together are designed um, uh, to, to generate those consistent returns, which is something of course we all strive for. And I don't know of anyone who likes to lose money trading, but it does happen. Um, and I think that the most important thing we can do is to to manage the risk and keep the size of any of those losses as small as possible. So uh, with small drawdowns and a high win versus loss expectancy, uh, the 14-day AIC has a smooth equity growth curve and it helps prevent your capital from any losses while continuing, uh, or excuse me, it helps preserve your capital um, from any losses while continuing to grow your account. So and that's a nice uh, benefit obviously to have. So those are just a few of uh, the characteristics of the 14-day asymmetrical iron condor. Uh, but before we dig deeper, um, I'd really like to re-familiarize you with the asymmetrical iron condor strategy, which is the base of where this new 14-day uh, AIC comes from. And then we'll dive uh, more deeply into the 14-day and where it differs and um, go over some of its unique benefits. Um, <clears throat> So as a lot of you may know, I like to work with high probability strategies that make consistent returns. And I also don't like to sit in front of my computer all day. Um, I'd rather be out, you know, riding my bike or doing something. I live in Southern California and the weather's usually pretty nice. So I, I prefer to be outdoors do, doing, doing fun things and sitting in front of my computer. Um, but I do want to make consistent returns. Uh, so when I started learning about trading options, my goal was basically try to make enough money per month to pay for my car payment. Mm -hmm. And uh, then as I continued, my goal became to see, you know, could I pay for my house payment? And then eventually I was able to make more money than my salary at the time, uh, which is when I quit my job and started to trade full time. 
Uh, and like many of you, I started with a variety of strategies, uh, double diagonals, butterflies, condors, calendars, etc. all these different things. Uh, but my favorites became the iron condor type strategies. And the reason why is I really liked the benefits that they had, and they suited my lifestyle of, of not wanting to sit in front of the computer all day. So as I continued to trade, I looked for better ways of trading these strategies and kind of constantly tweaking them, trying to make them uh, more uh, my own and more robust as market conditions changed. And uh, that's where the AIC or the asymmetrical iron condor came up, that monthly version that I'm sure a lot of you have seen. Uh, it was originally created as a way to deal with the fact that markets tended to move up more often and for longer periods of time than they move down. Um, so basically what would happen a lot of times is you'd have a lot more upside adjustments and it, um, it would, they're, you know, obviously a lot more common and they're also a lot more co costly because as the volatility comes down, there's not a lot you can do with them. The premium really doesn't really give you a, a lot of option to um, bring in more premium on that call side. So too many call adjustments uh, become a lot more costly. So uh, this particular trade was kind of created to, or the structure was created to kind of deal with that, that market constantly moving up, which is more typical uh, than it does moving down. Um, but it was also created to, you know, be able to handle large down moves as well. Um, so uh, I would like to mention, uh, for those of you who are familiar with this structure, I'm often asked, uh, if the asymmetrical iron condor is the same as the weirdor or the jeep or maybe there's some other names out there as well uh, these strategies may have the same looking structure and graph at the start of the trade but they may not be set up and managed uh, they may be set up and managed completely differently than than the way i'm doing it mm -hmm. um, the jeep is a good example uh, that i've seen its graph looks the same but i know that it's set up um, how many contracts you're using and where you're placing them and so forth is different and its management style is completely different as well um, even though the graph might look kind of the same when it starts off um, so the asymmetrical iron condor that I'm talking about here is going to be my specific methodology and trading rules for this type of trading structure and um, I also want to mention that I can't say how others trade the weird or uh, or use that name but the only one that I know for sure that follows my trading setup management and exit methodology and so forth for this strategy is in my weird or alert service that I that I offer as well. So I use both names, the asymmetrical iron condor and the, the weird or so if, if I'm trading it, uh, they're both the same. Um, so uh, let's let's get back to where I left off. <clears throat> what I wanted to create with this um, asymmetrical iron condor with this trade strategy was to get the best features of a typical iron condor, which does have quite a few strengths. It has a market neutral trade, it's easy to understand. Uh, the risk management style is pretty simple. Um, it has a high probability of wins and a decent return on margin, and it does well in, in most markets. I want something that's going to be able to handle, uh, you know, pretty much all markets, actually. But I wanted to um, uh, see if I could come up with something that didn't have the typical iron condor limitations. And some of the limitations of a typical iron condor would be something like it's, it tends to be difficult in low volatility up moving markets. Um, it doesn't use margin very efficiently. It's extremely inefficient in use of margin because you have to leave a lot of money on the side for, or at least, uh, you know, a lot of the different strategies out there. You have to leave, use a lot of money left over that you might not use uh, for adjustments. <clears throat> it tends to have a steep T plus zero line, so it can quickly get into trouble if you're not proactive with it. Um, and uh, the risk management relies on probabilities. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've, I have a, some, a pretty good fix for that in an iron condor sense, which is my nested iron condor, which takes care of some of these things as well. But the um, asymmetrical iron condor actually was able to combine all of these things into one strategy and make it an easy to trade, high probability strategy, like a typical iron condor, but with a much more risk averse flat delta or T plus or uh, zero line strategy that you guys are used to probably seeing in a lot of the butterfly trades. Mm -hmm. um, so as you can see here on the left, uh, the typical iron condor graph on the left um, is equal on both sides. You have equal risk on both sides and you have that that kind of hill uh, where you get that T plus zero line that has that steep slope on either side. So it can quickly get into trouble, especially if you're not being proactive with it. Um, 
And on the right side, I'm showing a graph of a typical asymmetrical iron condor, where as you can see, it's got a much flatter T plus zero line, uh, more reminiscent of uh, kind of like a, a butterfly type trade. It has less upside risk to deal with that, uh, the fact that the markets tend to move up more often, and I don't want to be dealing with tons of upside adjustments. Um, it still has a, a lot of room to the downside, and a, a it built in downside hedge from the beginning uh, that uh, can deal with uh, downside moves as well as, of course, an adjustment or risk management plan to deal with moves in, in either direction. Um, Amy, uh, we've got a yeah. question that's come in. Um, someone would like to know if your methods can be used to trade IWM or SPY ETFs. I'm sorry, you cut out at the beginning there. Can you just repeat I'm sorry. the first part? Yeah, the question from Jack is, can your methods be used to trade IWM or SPY? Uh, you can use these to trade um, ETFs or stocks or other um, uh, indices as well. Uh, you know, the rules are going to change a little bit, uh, but the most important thing would be to find something that has a lot of liquidity, um, uh, you know, brings in a decent enough premium uh, for the spreads that you're doing. But yes, they can be traded in those other um, underlyings as well. It just, you would have to probably just tweak it a little bit. And uh, like for instance, in the asymmetrical iron condor video course that I did for you guys, um, I do show uh, how to trade mainly in the Russell 2000, uh, but then I also have a whole section in there that talks about how to trade this in the SPX and mm -hmm. the changes that have to be done in order to make that happen. There's a few little tweaks. So that's kind of uh, what most likely would have to happen with um, some of the other underlines that you choose that you might choose to trade this in, but it, it, it certainly could work in in many different um, uh, underlines like ETFs or stocks or or uh, or other indices. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so <clears throat> the asymmetrical iron condor. Getting back to that, this like I said, it's it was a, a new, better strategy. It was able to combine all these great strengths of a typical iron condor and eliminate um, the weaknesses of a typical iron condor. So it was able to do, you know, market neutral, high probability of uh, wins, good returns, easily scalable, um, an easy risk management style. I like to make things as simple as possible. Um, works well in a variety of market. Actually, you can put this on any market condition. Um, and one of the things that I love about this trade is it has a very efficient use of margin. And when you, once you get into a trade, whatever your margin is, it pretty much stays the same throughout. It doesn't matter how many adjustments you're doing or whatever, it basically stays the same throughout, which is really a very nice uh, benefit. Uh, low drawdowns, that smooth T plus zero line. Uh, so it's kind of more like what a lot of people are used to with the butterflies. Uh, the upside risk can be completely removed uh, if managed properly. It still has a great large downside range and, you know, was shown has sh has been shown to even make money in a crash, um, and it makes money in a pretty uh, short amount of time. Not as short as the 14 day, which I'm going to show you, which also brings up some other unique benefits. Um, and it tends to have a lower volatility risk than a typical iron condor. So the vol it's you know negative Vega trade, but it's not quite as bad as a, a typical iron condor. So, um, so basically this strategy has really proven to be very powerful and its structure has been pow is powerful enough that it really works in even shorter uh, time frames, which is a question that was, was asked to me many, many times, you know, can this be traded in the weeklies? Do I have to trade it in, you know, every month and so forth. Um, but it, uh, and so I went out and, and, and worked on that. Um, but there were several things uh, that I had to change in order con to control the different type of risk that you have when you're going closer to expiration. Um, and so this is where uh, the new 14-day asymmetrical iron condor uh, comes into play. It's a different way of trading that um, AIC structure, that asymmetrical iron condor structure that I just showed you, and because of its short time frame nature, has some really unique additional benefits. So it, it benefits in many of the same ways as the asymmetrical iron condor done on a monthly basis, but it has some uh, unique additional benefits as well. Mm -hmm. So Amy, we've got a questions come in. Yeah. Um, for your strategy mm -hmm. is portfolio margin or reg T better? Uh, you know, it definitely, you know, will, you'll get a lot more bang for your buck with portfolio margin. Uh, but towards the end of the trade, you're going to, um, 
uh, it's going to increase, you know, risk depending on where you're at. Um, I, you know, either one could be used, just be aware of how much risk you're, you're really taking on. I like to look at these as just, you know, reg T to start start off with. And then as, as I get familiar with the trade and I've done it for a long time and I have a good feel for um, how the, how the trade works in different environments, then I will move it into a, you know, a, you know, my portfolio margin, uh, you know, I'll increase the contract size to account for that. But until I feel really comfort, comfortable about with it on my own, I wouldn't do that right away. I would just trade it with a reg T, but, um, but yeah, it could be, it could be done in either, uh, Reg T or portfolio margin, and it does. Uh, they do give you quite a bit of um, uh, quite a bit of extra ability to add extra contracts or in increase the scalability with you if you did use portfolio margin in this trade. Same as the you know the regular monthly AIC, uh, but you know of course there's added risk, so that's why I like to uh, I like to work on something for quite a while before I move over into portfolio margin. But that's my preference. Okay, very good. Um, Okay, so uh, so as you can see here, um, the 14-day asymmetrical iron condor, this is the graph, looks pretty much identical to the asymmetrical iron condor. Um, and, uh, and as you'll see shortly, it's because it's basically made up of, uh, you know, a lot of the same pieces. Um, but as you can see there, it's, it's, it's also got the flat T plus zero line, less upside risk. Uh, the delta is slightly long. It's always slightly long, but it's neutral. Um, and it's got that built-in downside hedge from the beginning um, as well. So that that part of the uh, uh, what it looks like, especially at the beginning, is is very much the same as the monthly asymmetrical iron condor. Um, let's look at the uh, planned capital and profit targets. Uh, the planned capital is, or basically the margin that's going to be used, is going to be when, when I put on a single unit or like the smallest unit of a uh, asymmetrical iron condor, or in this case, a 14 day asymmetrical iron condor, I'm gonna be using the same amount of uh, margin. It's gonna be somewhere between 16 and $18,000, usually around 17, uh, but $18,000 it can be at, at times. Um, and then, but I like to use a minimum account size to account for that uh, as 20,000. I always like to have a little wiggle room, um, you know, just in case it's like, maybe the first trade happens to be a loss or something like that. Um, <clears throat> the profit target uh, is two to 4% per trade. Um, and it's a little bit lower than the uh, AIC, than the monthly AIC, but not much. Uh, but, uh, you know, part of it is because I'm looking for really quick profits. I, you know, um, I want to be in and out of this trade as quickly as possible, get my risk off the table. Uh, of course, losses should always be kept as small as possible. In this case, for this trade, uh, they should be more, they should be, uh, smaller than 5% most of the time. Um, the win-loss expectancy is the same as the typical AIC, uh, you know, about 83%, uh, 10 wins to two losses, that kind of thing. Um, so again, the, um, uh, the benefits of the 14-day asymmetric iron condor, um, the, the, the main benefits are very much the same as the monthly asymmetrical iron condor. Um, so those are just a, a repeat of, you know, it's market neutral, it's high probability of wins, uh, you know, an easy risk management style, easily scalable and so forth. S same efficient use of margin um, and um, uh, also makes money in a short amount of time as the AIC does, but this is gonna be a much shorter amount of time. So let's take a look at some of the differences. Um, the asymmetrical iron con or the monthly version is a monthly strategy it's uh, entered in every monthly expiration cycle, and it's generally entered with 40 to 50 days to expiration. Uh, the days in the trade tend to average around 30 days. It's usually 30 to 40 days, depending on how many days to expiration. Um, I like to be out with uh, 14 days to expiration is usually my target uh, exit date, but I usually try to get out as early, you know, I always try to get out early, earlier if I can, uh, but the average is about 30 days. Uh, so still a pretty short-term trade. Uh, the 14-day asymmetrical iron condor is a weekly strategy. So this can be put in in any week, you know, every, every weekly um, cycle. So uh, you can put one on once a week. So if you have, you know, it gives you the opportunity to have uh, four uh, trades on per month. Um, and this one is also entered a little bit closer to expiration, between 30 to 35 days to expiration. And hence the name, the 14-day asymmetrical iron condor. The reason it's got that name is because I want to be I don't want to be in it 
for more than 14 days or give or take a day. But uh, you know, basically you should be in and out of this thing with 14 days or less, a lot of times less. Mm -hmm. So that's where the name comes from. Um, so some other uh, differences um, are going to be uh, the timing and um, entry choices. So the entry, the, the, the the, uh, the, the structure of it is going to be the same. You're still going to have the same amount of uh, credit spreads and, and uh, debit spreads as the asymmetrical iron condor, but the timing is going to be different um, so of, of the entry. Obviously, you're going to get in with 30 to 35 days to expiration, and I might choose you know, some different way of choosing the strikes, just slightly different um, on entry in order to get the... Um, uh, the, the right amount of uh, premium that I want. Um, also, the timing and decision-making of adjustments are going to be different. Um, so that's going to be uh, because of its shorter time frame. Um, and the holding period of the trade, of course, is going to be different. 14 days or less, that's going to um, uh, make some of, that's one of the reasons why some of these decisions are going to be uh, different and, and the rules are going to be different for this trade because I'm in it for such a short time. And you can only do so much uh, the shorter the time period and the closer to expiration, there's not a lot of time for recovery on certain types of adjustments and so forth. So it's just handled and managed a little bit uh, differently, um, and, and including the exit of the trade. Uh, the, the decision to exit the trade is going to be done differently as well. So basically, overall, because of this short time frame, the management of the trade, whether it's entry, adjustments, or exit, is going to be different than the monthly asymmetrical iron condor. Uh, but the shorter time frame um, has its advantages uh, because it's you're in the trade for uh, 14 days or less. Um, there's really um, a lot more trading opportunities um, each month, which in turn gives a, a greater a, a potential for a greater return potential per month or per year. And that same return potential is still achievable while putting less capital to risk. Um, in addition, um, because I can put on a trade at different times in the month, you know, on any weekly cycle, it gives me the ability to diversify risk over time. So I'm gonna go over each one of these, kind of explain what I mean by each of these bullet points. So uh, when I say it allows for greater return potential per month year, so for instance, in the monthly asymmetrical iron condor, I'm putting on a, a trade for each monthly expiration cycle. So that's 12 trades per year. Um, for the 14 day, uh, oops, that was supposed to say asymmetrical iron condor, I apologize. But as I mentioned, I trade in both with both names. So this is uh, the 14 day asymmetrical iron condor or weirder. Um, it can be entered each week. So that gives um, up to 52 trade opportunities per year. So if I'm able to make average maybe three or 4% um, on a monthly trade and able to average two to 3% on a weekly trade or a 14 day um, asymmetrical iron condor that I can enter each week, I have a lot more potential to make um, a higher return over, the, over the, that particular month or over that year. Um, in addition, um, there's, uh, you know, you, this trade could be used to put less capital at risk. Um, so for instance, um, and, and still shoot for the same annual return. So as an example, let's say I had $40,000 of capital that I wanted to put towards the asymmetrical iron condors. Um, so with a uh, um, $40,000, I could trade two tranches of, or two units of this trade uh, once per month. And let's say I average two to 4%, that's 24 to 48% per year, and I'm risking at any one time, if I'm if I'm using uh, if I'm putting on two units or two tranches of this trade, I'm risking about thirty six thousand because it's about eighteen thousand dollars worth of margin per each unit. Um, so I'm going to be risking at any one time thirty six thousand, and I'm putting one on every month. With that same forty thousand dollars of capital, I could do a fourteen day asymmetrical iron condor, um, and cut the uh, cut the margin or cut the capital in half that I'm using. So I can do a single tranche um, or one unit of a 14-day AIC every other week. So I'm not overlapping. Um, that gives me 26 trade opportunities. Let's say I average 2% uh, per trade, which is the, the average is, is between 2 and 3% um, that I'm shooting for. Uh, if I'm using $20,000 plant capital, 
that's 52% per year. Um, and my margin risk during that time, because I'm only putting on one tranche at a time and they're not overlapping, uh, is only 18,000. So it's a way of putting less capital at risk, but still being able to shoot for the same annual return as if I were to do a monthly campaign. So hopefully that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in addition, uh, okay. another benefit of the shorter time frame is flexibility. So it gives you flexibility um, because there's a trade set up available each week, um, you know, you have a choice of picking and choosing which week to enter trade, um, which allows, you know, so let's say you want to do both the monthly and the weekly ones, and you just miss an opportunity You're on vacation, you don't get a chance to put on a monthly trade. Well, you know that the following week, there's an opportunity to get into a weekly version of the asymmetrical iron condor. So it would, it can help avoid missed opportunities. Um, in those situations. And of course, you can choose to have one or more of these trades on per month as desired. So there's usually about four opportunities per month. Um, so uh, one of these uh, things that I want to do now, that I show you now, is I want to show you some trade examples. But in doing so, I'm going to touch on that last bullet point of the, the time frame, the shorter time frame benefits. I talked about diversifying risk over time. So in showing you these example trades, uh, I'm going to also kind of talk about what I meant by that as well. So as you can see here, uh, this is the uh, Russell 2000 during the month of May 2017. So just in that inside that yellow box, mm -hmm. uh, this is the chart. And at the beginning of the month, you can kind of see it's kind of chopping around quite a bit for a while, pretty much halfway through. Then we get that really big down candle. That's about a 33-point move. That's a really big move uh, for the rut. So that's, you know, about 2.5%, um, I think, at the time. Uh, and then we start to kind of gradually move up. And then we kind of come off again, have a nice big dip down, and then a huge rally at the very end. So kind of a lot of stuff going on there. And during the same time, uh, this is the RBX, which is the volatility index for the Russell 2000, just like the uh, VIX, the VIX is the volatility index for the SPX, we, the RBX is for the RUT. So as you can see there in the middle of the graph, when that big spike down happened, we get this big spike in uh, volatility as well. So we had a, you know, a lower volatility, a big spike in the middle, and then that started to come down. So that also can affect uh, trades as well. So those are the uh, um, the you know timing. This is where I'm talking about where timing can make a lot of difference. Um, so as I mentioned before, um, because this is a weekly trade, you can put it on in every any weekly cycle or skip a weekly cycle or or whatever you like. Um, there's going to be four. Usually, sometimes there's five, but usually there's four entry day opportunities within each month. So in this case, you can see the first one that circled there. Um, and then a week later, you've got another opportunity. So the first one happens, um, you know, this, the, the market's going to be chopping around going forward, as you can see there. The second one, the market kind of chops around, but then has that big down move. Uh, the third one, you kind of skip that down move, and you're just kind of in an upward market, but not too crazy. And then the fourth one, you've got this, you know, slight down, and then it really, you know, goes down. Um, has it, you know, dips down quite a bit before recovering and then has this really big rally up. So there's, you know, almost like four different markets going on there, or three at least. So, um, so that's what I mean by being able to diversify over time, being able to enter a trade at any one of these areas is going to give you a different market environment to go through. So it kind of diverses, diversifies um, your, tr what type of risk you're going to have going forward. And a lot, and not, not every month is going to be the same throughout. Uh, so in some cases, it can end up skipping a bad part of, you know, some kind of an event that happens that causes the market to really crash, or it could skip a, a big, huge rally, or it could skip some kind of chop. So, uh, so let's go forward and show um, what the first uh, trade would look like. So we're just going to call this trade one. It's uh, here at the very beginning of the month here, um, launched on uh, the fourth of the month. The rut at the time was at 1384, as you can see. Uh, that is what the graph looked like at the beginning of the trade. And, um, you know, again, just very typical of an asymmetrical iron condor type graph. Uh, just put in a little bit closer to the, to the money because it's put in at a shorter time period um, and just managed differently as well. So uh, now the type of adjustments will be very similar, but the management uh, 
trigger points and so forth is going to definitely be different because of the short time frame. But here we are in trade uh, day one. And as you remember, the market was kind of chopping around a little bit during that time right after I, I would have put this trade on. So here we are on day six. And you know the market kind of chopped around a little bit, but didn't go didn't go low enough for any adjustments on the downside. Didn't go high enough for any adjustments on the upside. And in six days, I was already up 2.9 percent. So um, my you know I'm always looking at risk reward in these trades, and my rules, or at least the way I like to trade this, and what I'm going to be sh showing you in the video course, is that um, I want to take advantage of any type of quick profit that I could make. So in this case, I would take a profit there and um, you know be pretty happy with 2.9% because I know I've got another trade that I could put on in another day or two for the for the next weekly cycle. Take this the, take this money off the table and, and put it onto the next trade. Or take a break and say that's good for the month, either way. So let's take a look at the next um, cycle here. So here we go. This is a second trade opportunity uh, entry for this um, month of May 2017. Um, and as you can see going forward, we get that chop and then we have that really big drop. So let's see what happens uh, during this time. So uh, here we go, trade two. The launch was on 5.11.17. The rut at the time was at 13.90. Um, and again, uh, your graph looks very, you know, typical of the, uh, the AIC or the asymmetric iron condor structure, right? Um, so going forward, on day five, uh, the market had kind of chopped around a little bit, and now we're up 2.6%. And this is a spot where, you know, I've been on the, I've been in the trade for less than a week. I'm up 2.6%. It's in my range. I'm going to just remove it and take my profits. Right mm -hmm. now, you might think, well, that's kind of cheating. So let's just take a look at this. This is where. This little arrow here is pointing. That's day five. That was that would have been day five in the trade, probably because it was a weekend or something before I, I start or I started it. Um, and it made a profit where in my range, and I took my profit. So in essence, I could have completely skipped this big down candle, not knowing it was coming, but just playing by. You know, this is the way I would trade it. But, but to be fair, let's continue and see, well, what would have happened if I would have just not taken my profits on day five and continued forward? So let's do that. We'll call this trade 2B. Uh, so in day six, um, we were, were down about 20 points and the rut is now at 1374 and it's time for an adjustment, downside adjustment. So I make my adjustment, I flatten out my deltas and let's move forward. So now we go same day, day six, now the end of the day, big candle, I think the rut moved down about 33 points. So now we're continuing down another uh, 13 or 14 points from the first adjustment. And now I'm making another adjustment. But as you can see, you know, everything's flat. We're still under the tent. There's, you know, opportunity to make a profit. Um, and the, uh, if you look down at the bottom of the graph, you'll see that it's down about 3%. So it's not, you know, a disaster by any means, you know, if I decided to close it here, I'm down, but I'm down within my, my range of, you know, low, uh, small losses as, you know, as I can make this, um, you know, lower than 5% for sure. But let's go forward. Um, so that's just day six. Um, two days later on day eight, we've uh, moved up to 1366. Nothing really happened on day seven. So I just skipped a day. Um, and as you can see here now, we're, you know, some of that volatility, that big volatility spike that you guys saw. Some of that volatility came down, came out. So the T plus zero line kind of rose up a little bit. Now we're basically, you know, just profitable, but basically at a break even stage. And then moving forward a little bit more, you know, as you remember, the market was kind of coming up a little bit. Um, day 12, so four days after that, the rut is now at 1372, about 20 points lower than where I started the trade, uh, but it's up, it's profitable about 1.1%. There's really only, you know, until my 14 days or 15 day uh, target expiration, there's really not a lot to make. Don't want to keep uh, any risk on the table anymore. This would be a time to remove the trade. So even with that big down move, you can see that it's still pretty resilient. Um, so as you can see here, the results from that, those two trades, trade one uh, was uh, started on the fourth, uh, 5, 4, 17 was in the trade for six days and the profit uh, was up about 2.76%. And then in trade two, 
and I just played by, by my rules that I like to uh, follow. Um, the days in the trade was only five and my profit was about 2.43%. Um, however, had I continued, um, I, I would have had to stay in the trade for an additional seven days or you know, 12 days total. And it still would have been profitable, but just under 10, just under 1%. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, these, like I said, this is a really quick trade. I want to be in and out of these as quick as possible. So a lot of times I'm not in these trades for very long. Um, you know, I'm in much less than 14 days. I don't want to take the chance of, of losing, um, uh, uh, a, build, a good, decent profit and have to deal with making adjustments if I don't have to. Um, so going forward here, as you can see, there's two more trade opportunities during this month. And this, this one right here, the market would have gone up. And the next one, we had that down move and it kind of sharply dipped, dipped down to where we had before and then had this huge skyrocket up again, kind of like a V. So those are the two last trade opportunities for that month. So let's see how they turned out. I'm not going to go through step by step, but uh, just show you how they turned out. Uh, trade three, where the market was kind of going up. Uh, that one only was only in the trade for four days and it was up 2.68%. And then trade four, where we had that dip down again, uh, probably caused an ad adjustment. And then we had that skyrocket up, probably just not enough time to recover from that. Um, as you know, the the monthly asymmetric iron condor would, would be able to recover from that because you're in it for longer. But the um, this, this is such a short term trade. Um, it just wasn't able to recover from that, you know, too many adjustments in that particular case for such a short term trade. So I was in it for eight days and I managed to uh, exit at a loss, but it was less than a 1% loss. So if I look at the uh, total of four trades for one month, um, and as you can see there, because of the number of days that I was in the trade, I wouldn't have even had any overlapping. So I would have used the same amount of margin or the same amount of capital would have been put to put for the whole month. Um, uh, that the profit could have been you know, somewhere around 7.13%. And even if I stayed in longer on trade two, um, it could have been 5.63%. So um, that's where I, I talk about the ability to possibly increase that uh, return potential uh, by, by doing multiple trades per month. Um, so I'll go, go ahead. We've got a couple questions have come in, Amy. Okay. Um, I was just about to finish up, but uh, oh, okay, no, no. My last two slides. And ask questions? No, that's or what would no. Go ahead, yeah, no. Go. Why don't, why don't we wait until you're finished the two slides? Okay, let me do that. Okay, so just to wrap it up, uh, the 14-day asymmetrical iron condor. These are results. Now, this is a new trade I've been working on, so I don't have years of live results. So what I put together was what I thought was kind of like, you know, a difficult year, kind of for not you know, horrible or anything like that. But January 2017 through February 2018, I just went all the way through uh, the date that I created this presentation, uh, or, you know, when I started back testing this. So and it includes um, the early February crash? It includes January and February, exactly. Mm -hmm. okay, um, and, uh, you know, January being such a low volatility and, and a lot of people have trouble in those constant upward markets, low volatility with every once in a while some spike downwards. Um, and then we finally getting that correction in February, uh, I thought that was a good uh, range to um, show because a lot of, uh, you know, theta trades don't really do well in low volatility. This trade is the same, you know, it would do better in, uh, you know, a normal volatility market, which we're getting into now, which I think is, which is why it's great, I think, to, to, to really uh, take advantage of that with um, all of these um, trades, the, the, the month monthly asymmetrical iron condor and this new 14-day asymmetrical iron condor. Um, but basically, this test during that time, so it's a little over a year, uh, was, there was 54 total trades. Uh, the average days in the trade was only eight, um, 46 wins to eight losses. Um, the average win, uh, this is for a single tranche um, of this particular trade, uh, was uh, $369. So I call it like a tranche or a unit. Um, average loss was uh, 315 the largest win was $669 and the largest loss was $735. So that's kind of uh, based on, you know, using approximate margin. The actual margin is going to be somewhere around $17,000. Uh, but like I said, I like to have um, about $20,000 in the account to trade each tranche. So uh, the max consecutive wins was 12 
and the max consecutive losses was only two. And if I go look at the detail of that, um, this is from uh, Option Net Explorer, uh, the uh, detailed report of all of the trades, all, all of those 54 trades. And you can kind of see there, you know, lots of, uh, not very much red, but you know, there are some losses. There's always gonna be some losses, but they're kept pretty small. Um, the largest one is, is in February. So I kind of highlighted the January, February period because I know that that's most recent in everyone's minds. Um, so if you look at that um, where it says January and it kind of brackets off four trades, those four trades were done during January. So during the month of January, where we know we had that, just it, the market just kept going and going and going and the volatility was super low. Um, and as you can see there, um, it was able to you know handle those trades. It was profitable. Um, some of them, you know, were in for a little bit longer, 12 days, eight days, 15 and 11. Um, but, it, you know, still able to make a decent amount of profit, even though there was not a lot of premium and the market uh, um, was just going, you know, really crazy in one direction. And then, of course, in February, we finally got that correction. So uh, the last four trades there, the ones that are bracketed, were, were um, trades that were done during the month of February, from the very beginning of February through the very ending. And as you can see there, that first one, that was probably where that first crash happened, where you go from a really low volatility environment to an extremely high volatility environment. And of course, that's going to be an issue. But again, it's under 5%. It's a loss, but it was under 5%. And I wasn't in it for very long. I was in it for four days. I'm not going to you know, there's no reason to try to uh, make more out of it because I'm putting on more risk than the reward I'm going to get because this is a very short-term trade. I don't have a lot of time to recover from a lot of downside adjustments, whereas with the monthly version, I do, but not with the with the weekly version. So, uh, you know, always best to just take a loss when you, if you get it, something like that. It's not really going to be great to try to recover from and go into the next trade, which was also a losing trade. Uh, but not down by much, was only in it for a day, um, and it probably had a big spike down during that time and just, just happened to get in at the wrong time. Uh, and then the next two trades at the end of February, we kind of were re recovering and just kind of sitting still, um, were both very profitable. So if I add all that up, it actually ends up to be a little bit on the profit side. So February would have turned out to be slightly profitable, um, or at least, you know, maybe a break even month. So it's still, that's another reason why I, I like to talk about that benefit of diversifying over time where um, maybe if I had one trade on during the month that trade would have been a losing trade but if I have the opportunity to enter four of them uh, maybe with the same amount of capital or or at least two of them with the same maybe I can you know make it a little bit more beneficial to me and, and possibly miss some of the the bad parts of the month so that's uh, my presentation uh, for the day and I uh, I'll yeah answer questions and Absolutely, and uh, we've got we got a bunch actually. So uh, okay. let, let's fire away. Maybe we'll take you know ten minutes worth of questions. Okay. Um, question on spreads from Neil: When entering and exiting, if the profit's two to three percent, say four to five hundred dollars per tranche, it seems there are a lot of legs. And I was just wondering what profits are like after the spreads. I think you mean. I think he's trying to say like, when you you know when you're actually. I think he means slip Slippage, exactly. That's what I think is kind of a better term for what he's asking. Yeah. Right. Um, well, you know, normally, and the same thing for the monthly ones, I'm going to try to, I usually try like to exit the, the main profit engine of this trade is going to be the put credit spreads. That's where most of the profit's coming from. Um, so I'm going to concentrate on can I get my price or really close to my price for the put credit spreads. And if I can, you know, get out with that, that's usually, um, going to be the biggest part of my slippage. Everything else is going to be hardly, it's not going to be much because there's just not a lot of contracts. When you got 10 put credit spreads to one put debit spread, that one put debit spread, maybe you, you know, have to give them an extra nickel or a dime or something like that. It's not going to be that much compared to giving, a, you know, 10 or 15 cents for the credit spread. So it's important to get the price that you can try to get for the put credit spread first when you're closing it. So I like to try to get as close to the mid price as possible. Sometimes I have to give up a nickel, um, you know, and usually I don't have to give up as much of a dime, but sometimes, but you, you kind of build that in. So, uh, but that's going to be where most of the slippage would come from. It would be from the put credit spreads, the rest of the trade, the, the far out of the money puts, they're basically going to be the same, even if the market's kind of moving around, you probably get the same amount for them. Uh, the call 
spreads are probably, unless the market's just raging higher, um, but volatility usually comes out then. So you're probably going to get a pretty good price on, you know, I don't really get a lot of slippage on the calls. The most slippage I would get would be on the puts and um, the put credit spreads. Like I said, if I'm, if I can get a good price on those exiting, then the rest of the, uh, the slippage isn't really going to be that much. Okay, great. Uh, next question. Are the back test results for RUT or SPX? Uh, those are for RUT. So everything I'm showing you, uh, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear on that, was for the Russell 2000. Okay, great. Um, how many months of live trading have you actually executed on this trade? Uh, I've done a few months of live trading on this trade. Um, just single tranche trades just to kind of get, um, uh, you know, make sure that the slippage and um, entry and so forth. I'm having enough liquidity and it, everything seems to be working really fine. So um, the only thing I would like to say is that uh, obviously with the, with the asymmetrical iron condor, which is the same structure, I've been trading that for multiple years. I've been trading that for about four years now, four or five years now, four, something like that. And this trade pretty much feels, has the same feel. I have a different way of managing it because I'm so close to expiration, but there have been a lot of monthly expert, uh, monthly um, asymmetrical iron condors that I've had to put in closer to the market as well. And so the feel of it is basically the same. So, um, you know, I feel very comfortable with this trade, even though it's at a shorter time period, even though um, I've only traded it, this particular style uh, for a few months live, I've traded the asymmetrical iron condor for, uh, you know, about four years and there's just not a lot of difference in execution. Um, the one thing I would like to, do, there is one thing I would like to say is because it is put in the weeklies, you do want to make sure there's enough liquidity. Um, so it, de it does tend to work better um, on, you know, smaller number of tranches, not like just one or two or anything like that. You can have, you know, multiple tranches, but if you're trying to do like a hundred or something like that, then it's the monthlies are going to be better for sure. But if okay. you just, you know, if, you, if you're trading anywhere from 1 to 25 tranches, then you should be fine in the weeklies. All right. Sven is asking, uh, in the back test, what was your criteria for exiting a trade earlier than 14 days? Um, well, my target profit is two, between 2 and 3%. So if I hit that, I'm, I'm gone. I see. Okay. And the other, the other way of looking at it, too, would be also, let's say the trade has had some adjustments and I wanted to, um, I, I'm, all, I'm also always looking at risk versus reward. So if I don't see enough reward for the risk I'm taking, that's another reason why I would exit the trade. All right, Mike B is asking um, one or 2% of what, when you're saying um, your, your profit is one or 2%, is that of reg T margin? Is it a planned capital? What is it exactly? Uh, the two to 3% is of the, um, the margin, the reg T margin, which is generally going to be somewhere between seventeen and eighteen thousand dollars, and like I said, the margin is it's pretty efficient with margin. So whatever you end up starting on in the trade is what it's going to be ending up in the trade. Okay. The, you, the, even with the adjustments, the margin doesn't really change much. All right, Rick V is asking: Do you target entry days when the vol spikes uh, down? Uh, you know, it's oh, sorry, when the vol spikes, in other words, down days up. is what Rick meant. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, obviously, it's always nice to try to get into these trades on a down day with a vol spike. Uh, but, you know, it's just a short term trade. What I like to do with this one is just, I don't have a crystal ball. If that happens, great, I'll take advantage of it. Um, if not, um, you know, I'll, I like to kind of pick a day of the week, usually towards the end of the end of the week, and maybe, you know, try to get in in the morning just to get it out of the way. Uh, that's kind of the way I look at it. But and if it happens to be a down day, that would be great. And if it isn't not, but that would be something to look at. If there was a nice vol spike and a down day and things kind of settled, that would be, okay, you know, I can put one on now and I'll just put it on in this weekly cycle instead of, you know, waiting a couple days. So that's why I say you have a wiggle room between 30 and 35 days to expiration, uh, you know, give or day, take a day. So that would be something that would be, you know, certainly something to look at depending on your preference.